Welcome in to another episode of Your Drone Questions Answered, brought to you by Drone Launch Academy. I'm your host, Chris Breedlove. Today's question is this, what equipment selection considerations should I have in mind when gearing up to take on drone mapping projects? Or what should I buy to do drone mapping? So I'm not going to specifically sit here and say, hey, you should buy X, Y, or Z, but I definitely have a a lot of opinions about this topic. My day job is to actually sell equipment, specifically UAVs and some other things. So I'm going to structure the solo episode, first of all, with just things to look for, key considerations or specifications to keep in mind when evaluating what you may want to be buying for your business, or even if you already have certain consumer grade drones, what to keep in mind. Then I'll give some other just examples specific, like, Hey, if it was me getting started right now, I might consider a package, something like this, but. There's a lot to unpack. There's a lot to think about. Should I do a PPK workflow, RTK workflow, both? What are my network subscription? I go, there's a lot that goes into that. Oh, my client says I can't use Chinese. What are my other options? I'm trying to do LIDAR. So to me, find a trusted partner. If you don't have one, if you don't have one, get one, <laughs> ask your friends and colleagues in the industry. So I can't say that enough. With that said, of course, the timing of this is of course, Drone Launch Academy's launch, which I guess by the time this goes out and gets published. The promo will have just ended probably a couple of days prior, but it's still a pretty new and exciting thing. The advanced drone mapping and modeling certificate program. So even on the kind of live couple of announcement evenings, I noticed there was a fairly frequent question in the chat. Well, can I use this? Can I use my mini for mapping or what should I buy for mapping? So I'm going to try to take a bite out of answering that question. So first things first, kind of the first bucket I want to walk through is just, okay, what do I need to get going in drone mapping? We'll just assume for the sake of argument. Maybe you're getting started from scratch. The very first thing, and I would say this applies for what you're buying or trying to kind of make do with what you already have. Does your drone support automated missions? If you can't do that, and there's umpteen different third party tools out there that you can check out and see if they are supported. But if your drone, you know, all you can do is fly around manually, take certain shots and film, that's great for a lot of other scenarios and applications not going to help you in mapping. We need that consistent, like, Hey, I'm flying a 50% and actually it's a bad example for photogrammetry, but let's say 70% side lap flight line to flight line, trigger my photos, whether it's distance or time based, whatever. And it's going to go cover these 20 acres automatically. You got to have that function. So that really, I would say is the one singular, like got to have it to even start dabbling in mapping. Does your drone or does it not support automated missions? And I think DroneLink is a great example of a tool that supports pretty decently wide uh, number of DJI drones, including more shading towards consumer, but not everything. So if you have, I think specifically a Mini 4 Pro, thumbs up, DroneLink supports it. If you have a Mini 4 not Pro, it doesn't. So, and that's just one example. I honestly wouldn't even start there myself, but it's really meant specifically if you already have, especially consumer grade or the prosumer grade drones, look at something like DroneLink see if it for automated mapping missions. Moving beyond that, the other things to keep in mind, and this is really more serious for actually getting started, maybe upgrading or buying something from scratch from a drone and incentive perspective, does that camera payload, does that camera have a mechanical shutter? The reason for that, and I think you can get away with, I've gotten away with it at times using a electronic shutter on a non mapping orbit inspection drone to still stitch an ortho. Did it still work? Like, yeah, it still worked. The risk you run if you're trying to map day in and day out, provide good quality data to your paying client is if you have not mechanical shutter, electronic shutter, there's a high likelihood, at least a high risk of motion blur. You know, when you fly at 25, 30 miles an hour, depending on the drone, of course, all these different settings and things you're doing, that electronic shutter, you can have a, a blurring effect in that resulting north of mosaic. Mechanical shutter really minimizes it and takes that out altogether. So again, automated mapping mission, mandatory. If it doesn't do that, you're really not able to do a so-called mapping project. Mark is weirdo exception. I can't think of one. So that's, that's one. And maybe the only strictly speaking mandatory criteria two, is there a mechanical shutter option? Most of these smaller quads don't do swappable payload. That's not always the case. It's mostly the case. So if you go by a thermal variant. Typically they don't have a wide angle camera with a mechanical shutter. You could technically do, let's say with a Mavic three or now Mavic or Matrice four thermal option, but you don't have that mechanical shutter. It's not optimized for mapping. Third would be, is it RTK or PPK enabled? Not to have a whole long conversation here, but RTK real time kinematic PPK post-process kinematic, but those are two different ways. And really the situation is, are your corrections being fed to the drone and ultimately writing to those image geotags? They're corrected. They're better. Not just raw GNSS while you fly, that's RTK. 
Are you dealing with that on the back end? Maybe you have a core station nearby. You pull that static file that was logging at one second, got your own base station sitting there logging static and you post process, you bring that down after the fact, take those raw images, point to that folder, point to that, that Rhinex file, bring it together, update those, those post process geotags. Does the drone even support RTK and or PPK? Again, your consumer approaching the drone typically won't. Now you're stuck with, and I say stuck with, but you're limited to, you got to set enough control. Again, we're not here to break down all those concepts. If this is all utterly foreign gibberish to you, definitely a reason to check out the new certificate program through Drone Launch Academy, but you got to see a lot more control to kind of make up for your drone's limitation. If it can't do even RTK nor PPK. Some great ways to kind of check that out. And I'll give my, my caveats at the end. I do represent a lot of different brands I'm talking about tonight in my day job, not an endorsement or commercial for that purpose, but they are the ones I'm familiar with. But Propeller, for example, their platform, look at their supported recommended drones list. They only support drones that they know either they're RTK enabled or not. They don't even care about that so much, but that means they have really good GNSS on the drone. Propeller can do their process, which is really a post-process, a PPK process to pull in some kind of base file and really improve those image geotags. So if you look at somebody like a propeller, like a drone deploy, like a whoever, those serious enterprise cloud processing platforms, what you're looking to use is not on their list. There's generally a good reason for that. So you might want to consider if you're going to lean towards one of those platforms or not, at least use their list as a starting point. I mean, the last two things make this a five part, just quick criteria list here would be, of course, the camera sensor itself. You have a canonical shutter, but also is it 20 megapixel? Is it 45 megapixel? How large is the sensor? Is that going to help with low light situations? Yada, yada. You can get way into those weeds. 20 megapixels is still pretty standard. The Matrice 4E, somewhat surprisingly, actually, I think to a lot of folks is still a 20 megapixel camera. Nothing wrong with that. If you're trying to fly at 400 feet though, your GSD with that 20 megapixel sensor obviously won't be nearly as, as good potentially as a 42, 45, 61 megapixel, whatever different cameras. Keep that part in mind, types of sites you intend to do, how many images or take a lot more images to fly at, let's say 200, 250 feet, the 20 megapixel sensor to get a certain DSD versus flying a 61 megapixel Sony Alex LR1 at 400 feet. Fewer images equals overall a smaller data size to feed through your software and so on and so forth. Keep that in mind. And then with that, software is huge as well. To me, on the photogrammetry side, which is mostly what I'm kind of talking about in this, getting started here, LiDAR is a little bit of a different ball game with a lot of this stuff as far as platforms, bigger platforms that support software payloads, get some point cloud software to really work on those and get deliverables and so on. But software choice, a lot of it to me is six, one, half a dozen, the other. DJI Terra, Pix40 Matic, Trimble Business Center photogrammetry module. Drone the map from Ezri, uh, add yourself MetaShape, the list goes on and on and on. But even open drone map, which I know more command line until you pay for the GUI, but they're all going to do the same thing, right? Point to your folder of images, bring in your control points. You should have those. If you're getting serious about, about drone mapping, you're going to generally basically set a couple parameters, hit go. It's going to do your triangulation, pick your targets to improve that a little bit. It's going to keep on going, stitch your ortho, maybe give you the point cloud surface and so on. So to me, a lot of that comes down to personal preference, software you're already familiar with, the interface and that kind of thing, obviously cost and then where you're going to downstream from that. So keep those five things in mind. I think they'll give you a really good general place to start. A couple more things I'm going to give just a couple of sample packages, maybe that I would gravitate towards right now if I've been started. So obviously that's all drone slash sensor. And in most cases, these smaller quadcopters like what was, you know, Phantom 4 RTK, Mavic 3 Enterprise, Adam Matrice 4 Enterprise, those typically are smaller quadcopters, typically with a fixed payload. You're going to start with something like that. You might up, upgrade to a bigger, maybe a fixed wing, maybe a bigger medium lift quadcopter, like an M350 from DJI, like a Freefly Astro, like a so on and so forth. But got the drone in the center, obviously. You got to have some kind of GNSS receiver. GNSS meaning all the constellations, not just GPS, which is just US. A rover, typically what we're going to refer to that as, to shoot in check shots and ground control points. But you're going to need something to at least validate, to provide a sanity check on yourself. For me as a Trimble guy, for a Trimble dealer, I might get me a little Catalyst DA2 receiver with the appropriate subscription. Pull, you got to be able to get good Z values, good elevations. Mm, low, just a little bit, 1100 bucks, 400 bucks, whatever it may be. I'm ready to roll with that. Do my bare minimum GCPs, let's say with the Mavic 3 Enterprise or an M4E. Uh, Mlet, of course, is very popular in that space. Mlet RS3, great all in one receiver, will support both your RTK corrections and your logging of static data for PPK workflow for just a few thousand dollars. 
and probably the best option, assuming you're going to be in a DGI ecosystem. I'll get to my preferred package I might start with today here in a moment with a new DRTK3 for DGI. DRTK2, I've used that personally quite a bit. I'll confess I've not used a DRTK3 yet, but knowing DGI, knowing what they've done and seeing what's now additional features of the DRTK3, it's going to be a really powerful all-in-one solution. It'll provide that real-time correction source to your drone while you're flying, assuming to giant enterprise drone or to kit module. It can actually be picked up, unlike the DRTK2, used as a rover connected to some kind of RTK correction source, some kind of in-trip service. Where I live in North Carolina, the NC Real-Time Network, for example, and you can use that DRTK3 as a true rover to shoot in your, your targets, your GCPs, and collect check shots, do both things. So doing all that in a package that I think when you add DRTK3 itself, plus it's tripod that goes with it, you can probably get a GPC case as well. They've always had them in the past with the RTK2. You're still looking at sub $3,000. Pick up a subscription in certain states are totally free. North Carolina, again, that network RTK subscription is 500 bucks for two logins for life. So maybe just over three grand of investment, you've got everything you need to pair with, again, uh, any DJI enterprise drone that's RTK enabled, which they all are at this point, um, unless you left off the RTK module back in the day. So some real quick things. And the last thing I'll say, it would be software, right? If you're doing serious photo and video editing already, videography, photography already, hopefully they have a pretty decent computer, decent oomph, decent RAM, decent graphics card, you probably do. It'll likely be okay. If you're starting from scratch, you know, please don't skimp on the computer, right? Unless you're doing everything in the cloud through a service like a propeller, like a drone deploy, et cetera, you'll need some computing power to throw at these, uh, these reconstructions that you're doing. So pay attention whenever software, if I'm getting started today as a drone service provider, I'm trying to really get, be serious about this out of the gate. Absolutely an M4E, a Matrice 4 enterprise. Probably the DRTK3, as I just mentioned a few moments ago, then whatever state or states I'm operating in, make sure I have the right intro credentials, which is to say, again, at usually the state level, um, RTK correction source, provider of the internet. Um, but you register for that, pay whoever you need to pay for maybe the state of North Carolina, 500 bucks, two seats good for life, M4E, DRTK3 associated real time network subscriptions. And that's really the core bit of my kit. Yeah. You'll need some targets. The set control, you can buy some, you can make your own, you know, paint, tape, whatever on hard surface and sorts of things, decent processing workstation. And you're pretty much ready to go with everything that you already have in place for your business. Obviously your department of seven insurance and so on. I want to be able to be more versatile, swappable payloads, maybe even add some lot in at some point for aerial, uh, you have topographic surveys and things like that through the woods. I look at an M350 with an L2. L2 camera is the same exact same camera center actually as the Maverick three enterprise. So. Do both things on payload, P1 later if you needed to, try a resolution, and of course, get other third party cameras and LiDAR. So, something like that, let's we'll call it even now with tariffs and certain shenanigans like that, call it 40K or just under 40K. You're locked and loaded, you're ready to go. If you're really like, hey, I'm like going all in, or I've already been doing smaller scale mapping with a Phantom 4 RTK or a Mavic 3 Enterprise M4E, I just bought one, I'm going to get one, whatever. I want to take on maybe much larger sites, consider a fixed wing drone. Uh, again, this is not meant to be an exhaustive endorsement of all the brands I recommend, but certainly Wingtra is one that I'm personally a huge fan of. A lot of successful my customers using Wingtra. Checks all the compliance boxes that you need. And also it's just dead easy to use. Really simple and a variety of camera options as well, and including LiDAR. So if I'm trying to do much larger areas, not just 50, 100, 200 acres, but routinely doing a few hundred acres, 500 acres or more, whatever. And also need to check those compliance boxes. Check out Wingtra. Um, could be a great package there. You'd be looking at for serious with the higher end camera options around 40 K could definitely get under that. Could also be a lot more than that. It's really just depends on options there. And if someone's saying, Hey, I'm trying to get like an M350 port supple payloads, but it needs to not be Chinese. Okay. I really seriously check out the free fly Astro. Free fly has been at, at this for a long time. The Astro is to me, my personal favorite, as far as a medium lift quadcopter, that's not the M300 Gen350 you can get and their website's really easy and exposed what their costs are. They do direct as well, but $38,000, $39,000, fully loaded Astro, the really nice Sony ILX LR1, 61 megapixel camera with mechanical shutter, 
it's RTK and PPK compatible Can work with certain platforms online as well for some of those enhanced processing and geotagging. And then to add LIDAR, I honestly probably consider now it's not actually out yet. No one's seen sample data even yet as we record this in late March, early April, 2025, but the Echo one from Teledyne promises to be a pretty impressive payload, really nice specs on the spec sheet, won't break the bank at about $60,000. So for about a hundred thousand dollars, I could have a free fly Astro fully loaded ray photogrammetry plus that Echo One payload once it hits the market here, hopefully the next few months to come. A common question I hear all the time is what about, you know, I'm not using DJI or I can't use DJI. What would you recommend in that small quadcopter category? And the answer is it's really tough. When you look at other quadcopters that aren't DJI, a lot of them don't even have mechanical shutter. So again, like I mentioned though, could you use some photogrammetry? Yes. Do those usually support automated map emissions? Yes, they do. Are people doing that? Yes, they are. So like, it's not, utterly disqualifying, but to me, to make that investment, that it's a few thousand dollars. It's not insane. It's not a hundred thousand dollars, but it's not really optimized for mapping. That just feels to me like what's, what's the point if I have clients that are that uptight about it and I can't use my Phantom 4 Mavic 3 Enterprise or M4E, maybe I go ahead and step up really into something that gives me more, more versatility, whether it's a fixed wing or a free fly astro. That, that's just me, my personal attitude on it. But anyway. Hope this helped you all. Again, please do check out the Advanced from Mapping Modeling Certificate Program that's been recently launched on Academy. Hope that helps you all. And as always, if you have a question like us to answer on this show, please drop me a line at chris at drawnlaunchacademy.com. Visit ydqa.io or if you're part of the Drone Launch Connect community, submit your question there. Until next time, have a great week.